This pestilence, one that we can prevent, detect and treat, continues to cast a long shadow over the world. Instead of meeting in the aftermath of the pandemic, we're meeting at the fresh wave of cases and deaths crashes into Europe with untold and uncounted deaths around the world. And although other regions are seeing declining or stable trends, if there is one thing we have learned, it's that no region, no country, no community and no individual is safe until we are all safe. The emergence of the highly mutated Omicron variant underlines just how perilous and precarious our situation is. South Africa and Botswana should be thanked for detecting, sequencing, and reporting this variant not penalized. Indeed, Omicron demonstrates just why the world needs a new accord on pandemics. Our current system dis disincentivizes countries from alerting others to threats that will inevitably land on their shores. We don't yet know whether Omicron is associated with more transmission, more severe disease, more risk of reinfections, or more risk of evading vaccines. Scientists at WHO and around the world are working urgently to answer these questions. We shouldn't need another wake-up call. We should all be wide awake to the threat of this virus. But Omicron's very emergence is another reminder that although many of us might think we're done with COVID-19, it's not done with us. We're living through a cycle of panic and neglect. Hard-won gains could vanish in an instant. Our most immediate task, therefore, is to end this pandemic. Indeed, our ability to end this pandemic is a test of our collective ability to prevent, respond effectively to future pandemics because the same principles apply. The same principles. Courageous and compassionate leadership, fidelity to science, generosity in sharing the fruits of research, and an unshakable commitment to equity and solidarity. If we cannot apply those principles now to tame COVID-19, how can we hope to prevent history repeating? And we cannot end this pandemic unless we solve the vaccine crisis. In less than a year, almost 8 billion vaccines have been administered around the world, the largest vaccination campaign in history. More than a year ago, before the, the first vaccines were approved, WHO and our partners established the ACT Accelerator, COVAX, and CITAP to facilitate equitable access to vaccines, tests, treatments, and PPE. And we have shown that these mechanisms work. COVAX has now shipped more than 550 million vaccine doses, including almost 250 million doses in the last two months, more than it shipped in the first seven months of this year. Last week, CTAP and the Medicines Patent Pool finalized its first licensing agreement with the Spanish National Research Council. A transparent, global, and non-exclusive license for a serological antibody test. My thanks to Spain and to His Excellency President Carlos Alvarado Queseda of Costa Rica for his leadership in initiating CITAP. So thanks to the President of Spain, President Pedro, and also President of Costa Rica, President Quesada. 
Earlier this year, we also established a technology transfer hub for mRNA vaccines in South Africa to facilitate local production and regional self-reliance. But a year ago, as we began to see some countries striking bilateral deals with manufacturers, we warned that the poorest and most vulnerable would be trampled in the global stampede for vaccines. And that's exactly what has happened. More than 80% of the world's vaccines have gone through G20 countries. Low-income countries, most of them in Africa, have received just 0.6% of all vaccines. We understand and support every government's responsibility to protect its own people. It's natural. But vaccine equity is not charity. It's in every country's best interests. No country can vaccinate its way out of the pandemic alone. The longer vaccine inequity persists, the more opportunity this virus has to spread and evolve in ways we cannot predict nor prevent. We're all in this together. We call on every member state to support the targets to vaccinate 40% of the population of every country by the end of this year and 70% by the middle of next year. 103 countries still have not reached the 40% target. And more than half of them are at risk of missing it by the end of the year, mainly because they cannot access the vaccines they need, and most of them in Africa. Even as some countries are now beginning to vaccinate groups at very low risk of severe disease, or to give boosters to healthy adults, just one in four health workers in Africa has been vaccinated. This is unacceptable. With emerging evidence of some waning vaccine immunity against infection, it's clear that in future countries will need tailored booster strategies. WHO's position remains that health workers Older people and other at-risk groups must be vaccinated first in all countries before those at low risk of serious disease and before boosters are given to already vaccinated healthy adults. There is no doubt that vaccines have saved many lives and helped to quell the pandemic in many countries. Countries that have achieved the highest vaccination rates are now seeing a decoupling between cases and deaths. But in too many countries and communities, the bright light of vaccines has also become a blind, blinding light to the continued need for other tools to stop this virus spreading, to stop it overwhelming our health systems, and to stop it killing. Vaccines save lives, but they do not fully prevent infection or transmission. Until we reach high levels of vaccination in every country, suppressing transmission remains essential. We don't mean lockdowns, which are a last resort in the most extreme circumstances. We mean a tailored and comprehensive package of measures that strike a balance between protecting the rights, freedoms, and livelihoods of individuals while protecting the health and safety of the most vulnerable members of communities. 